I put my suit on for this one. I have uh, quite an objective for this hive. I'm going to take the hive stand out from underneath it and put a new hive stand in. My current hive stand design, the rails go this way and the hive sits down on them. The new hive stand I'm putting underneath, the rails go front to back and it's so I can put my Bridminder scale on it. So one of my objectives is I'm going to take this hive down to the floor and put a new hive stand and put, put Broodminder scales underneath so they can get my weights on this hive and some Broodminders in it. I'm also going to take a mite sample and the two gray honey boxes with the green tags on them, they're full of honey. I'm going to look and see whether they're capped and ready to be harvested. The box on the top was already harvested this season. I'm going to look to see that it's empty and whether they're storing anything in it. And in the next couple days, I'm probably going to come and take the two conventional boxes off and I'll decide what to do with the box on the top. I'm assuming they cleaned it all out. So that's what you're going to see. I'm not going to talk too much about it while I'm doing it. I'm just going to go in and uh, get the job done. Because I'm being so intrusive, I put a suit on. I'm going to put my veil up and everything. Um, Usually it could work these bees with just a little bit of smoke and not be concerned about getting stung, but here, because I'm being so intrusive, I'm gonna be careful with it. All right, go to work. If I do get to the point of doing a mic check, I'm gonna try this new device that I built recently. Kudos goes to Bee Culture Magazine. They've been publishing uh, innovative ideas from people and this is one of them so if the device well first off the it's my design i borrowed from the concept uh from the original but did it differently so this is hollow here the goal is i'm going to pick a frame that i want to do a mite sample on and i'm going to put it in here and then i'm going to shake it down and i'm going to turn it sideways and they're going to dump in this little container i have strapped on here now, if you look at the container, I have a black mark. That's measured to a half cup. I poured a half cup of material in there and then wrote the line so I know how much a half cup of bees are. You don't have to shake them in a plastic tray and scoop them out with a half cup. And the bees all stay contained in here. And then you just take the frame out and put it back in. First time using it. So if this works out and I get to the point where I'm going to take a mite sample, I'm going to try this thing. Or I might chicken out and go the conventional route. We'll see. But wanted to show you what this is. So if it shows up in the video, that's what its point is. They really propolize this hive. This box was put on here last Saturday or Sunday after being harvested. And what's interesting is I see all new comb. Kind of curious as to what they did in here. I'll find out when I lift it off how heavy it is. Unbelievable, this box is full of honey. It was empty last week, we just harvested it. Oh, I can hardly lift the thing. Wow, I am shocked at how much they collected here.
That's easily got to be 60 pounds. I'm going to have to put another honey super on this box and see what I get. Unbelievable how good this hive has done this year. This box is super, super, super heavy. 80 pounds, 60 to 80 pounds, no joke. Totally ready to be harvested, that one. It's got to come off this weekend. If you leave this uh, excess comb on top, they glue from the frame underneath. I know the cameras are picking up a breeze. Not much I can do about that. Heavy. I always come back later and pick all this wax up. I don't like to leave it laying around outside the hive. Any wax or propolis. I have a little plastic bag that I use. Now all the foragers are coming back, and when I move this box, they're going to wonder what happened to their hive. So I want to be quick about this, and I'm actually going to pick the whole hive stand off and move it up front, so they have a place to go, and then I'll bring the box to it. giving them just a little extra smoke because I want them to be down in the hive when I pull it forward and not coming up off the frames.
Probably. Probably. Look in here for brood first. I've not been in this box, so I'm gonna take a look and see what's in it. Ow! Sorry, honey. I don't know what I did to deserve that one. No matter how many times you get stung, when they zap you unexpected, sometimes it's like a pinch. So to be expected, this is a food frame. That's what you have on the outside. Might seem like a lot of smoke, but there's a lot of wind coming across the field here.
What I'm looking for is a brood in all stages. So I have eggs, larvae, beginning of pupa, capped on the other side. No sign of a queen. So this is the frame I'm going to use to sample my mites. I'm going to be careful to check and see if the queen is on here. So what you, what you may not be able to tell on the camera is there's eggs and larvae all throughout this whole space. The entire face of the frame, every cell has something in it. And who takes care of that but nurse bees. So there's no doubt there's nurse bees here on this frame. And I think I have a half cup of them. So I've looked a couple times for the queen. I don't see her. I'm going to try my device. Whoops. How perfect is that? Now there's no doubt what a half cup looks like there.
Broodminder sensor going in. A little wobble, not very happy about that. So at this juncture, I'm just going to put it back together. I'm sure you can figure out that I'm going to put the boxes back on. I've disturbed them a lot, but in due time, they'll all go back in the hive and it'll just pick right up where it came off from. As it is, a hive with high population tends to breed in a lot of mites. So when I look at this and I see all these Varroa mite in the sample, I think it's completely and utterly obvious that this hive has to be treated. Uh, every one of those roundish brick colored items floating in the liquid there is a Varroa mite. And there's at least two dozen in them so I don't need to count to find out whether I'm over the threshold. I am over the threshold. And So the moral to the story is whenever you have a hive that does spectacular in the spring and it grows to be a booming colony and gives you lots of honey like this, don't be surprised 
if it implodes shortly after the nectar flow is over. It's super important to take your mite checks early. It's the end of June, a lot of times the recommendation is July and August. But imagine all of these mites on those bees come August. The entire colony is going to be sick and overwhelmed. So I'm of the opinion that get your honey off or treat with something that you could put on there with honey, but do your mite checks often and early. Now what I'll do, depending on the weather, is figure out what kind of mite treatment to put in here. And then after the effective treatment time is done, I'll come back and measure it again to make sure it worked. But one of the key things I wanted to do before July got here, I used to say July and August, but now I'm thinking June and probably earlier, is make sure I check my mite levels across all my hives. And it's a good thing I did.